Hey, it's Mike. And Nick. From their ancestors. Of course, we are here at uh, Lee. I always get Lee Valley Velo Park. Velo uh, Park. We are here for the run through uh, where well, you're doing 5K. I'm doing 10K. Okay. Uh, most importantly, we are testing some shoes that kind of while we're filming this, we're not allowed to kind of talk about, but we Ooh. will when this video goes up. Uh, <laughs> we've got the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. So obviously, this is the third generation of On's kind of top tier racing shoe. Um, in terms of your experience so far, Nick, in terms of the run you've done, what have you done so far and what you're kind of hoping to see from this shoot? So, I've done a long run, I've done a 20 wire, I've done a half marathon basically with a nice 7k pickup around inching towards marathon pace in them, and I've done a 10k tempo, but this will be the fastest I've run. I want to kind of do something short and sharp today and test their all out speed. It should be quite interesting. I think um, I'm liking them so far. Yeah. It's just uh, whether they can really, as always, with on justify their price tag and that kind of thing. <laughs> just hill locking them now, if I'm distracted. Yeah, I mean, I definitely I think, I think we could collectively say as a team, the first cloud bin we didn't absolutely love i think it got definitely felt better on the second generation yeah. this feels like a markedly different shoe i think for me personally i always found the previous two shoes a little bit too firm this feels like it's on the right side of that yeah. i feel like the cloud tech side of things has probably taken a bit of a step back in terms of it's still there obviously but yeah. i still feel it's not as pr prominent in terms of what you're getting in terms of this shoe i've done kind of a 10k um, I've done a longer hour running it, I've done a track session in it, I've definitely felt a lot better in this shoe than I have done in the previous shoes. So so I'm doing the 10K, looking forward to you know seeing how it performs in terms of running a little bit quicker when you really have to kind of push it in this shoe um, and see how it compares to the other super shoes that I've yeah. run with really. Um, in terms of other stuff, Nick, have you got anything else you're testing? Yeah, so I've got a couple of watches on today. So a couple of watches that are very good at one thing and I want to test the other thing. So basically I've got the uh, Epix Pro 51 millimeters on. I'm going to be testing the heart rate on that against the chest strap, which is linked up to the Polar Ignite 3, which is really bad on GPS. So I'm trying <laughs> to see if you can I mean, today is a really open loop. Three yeah. times. You should be able to do the GPS for this. I want to test it for that. I'll be, so basically I'll be testing the Polar's GPS against the Ignite. Uh, the Epix is very good GPS and the Epix yeah. is optical heart rate against the chest strap linked to the Polar. How about you, Mike? So I've got a few things. Headphone wise, I have got the Monster DNA Fit. Uh, so these are like ear hook style headphones are about £130, $130. Um, obviously a little bit more in terms of secureness. <laughs> Um, so I'll be seeing how that kind of performs as well. I've had a couple of runs with them, they've been pretty good. I don't think the sound's particularly fantastic compared to some other hook design, even cheaper ones, but I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Watch-wise, I've actually got the 965 and the Epix Pro, and I'm really looking at the heart rate sensor stuff because this is just something that Garmin's made a big deal about with the upgraded heart rate sensor on the Epix Pro, so I'll be looking at that. Other than that, I've got a new running belt I've chosen to chuck on a kind of, the new <laughs> balance kind of stretch running belt, see how it gets on, but mainly it'll be the watches and really the shoes and seeing how they perform really. Nice one, and uh, we're here obviously for the run through event at the Velo Park, they've uh, had us down for this, so a big thank you to them, and we've got some run through socks on. They so. do match well with the Yeah, you'll method, see, those, uh, yeah. see those popping up in the video on the cutaways, but yeah. It's actually meant to be like 29 degrees today, I thought it was going to be baking, and it's still yeah. cloudy and beautiful, so. We might have got away with Got away it, with that, okay. <laughs> Right, I'm going to race first, and then uh, we'll probably catch up individually after the races, because I might have to jet home. Yeah, see ya. See ya. Fun, fun race, even if it was very hot and hilly. Uh, hills actually surprised me a little bit. Uh, it's quite up and down, but I figured over 5k, if I gassed the hills, I could recover on the downhills, but I was really feeling it by the end. Went out a bit quick and yeah, I just held on for the last 3k at a fairly uh, sedate pace. But um, pleased to run something like 1628, and I really enjoyed the Cloud Boomer Echo today. I think it's a really sprightly shoe. Like going up the hills, it felt very light and nimble. It's not like the lightest carbon shoe out there, but it does feel very lightly on the foot. I think you get a nice amount of punch from the plate. There were some good straights there with a little bit of the 
slight downhill to them where you could really kick on and the shoe felt like it was delivering the kind of springy propulsion you expect from a carbon shoe like this. It didn't absolutely wow me compared to the carbon shoes out there today. I mean, it's a little hard to say over 5K, you know, you end up just completely out of it when you're trying to push and just get to the finish. But um, I did, did enjoy it today. Like, it, what I like about it is it's really high drop. It's got a very aggressive rocker as well. So you do get a really nice, smooth push through off it. And I do think it turns over really quickly. So it's a successful test of the shoe today overall, I'd say. Like, we'll talk a lot more in our full review about different strengths and weaknesses, but I think it's certainly a racer so that's not really going to let you down compared to other options out there, especially over just the 5k distance. Questions really will be about how much it's really worth compared to other shoes when it's got such a high price tag and there are other shoes out there, but I'd probably still rate a little bit higher, things like the Vaporfly for the 5k. Run through Lee Valley Velo Park 10k done. That was tough. Now I've actually done the 10 miler here, I normally do, it's normally later in the year and found it pretty good actually. I've run pretty well, I think I finished fourth one year um 10k that was tough going all out trying to go all out ban it pretty hard it was hot out there had to throw on the on cap um just before i started a race which was a good call in the end um in terms of running in the cloud boom echo 3 i mean it was tough running in that kind of short distance with it but i felt like and i felt like this when i've kind of gone some longer runs in the cloud boom echo 3 is that when you start to coast it feels really really good you know you don't get that firmness my legs felt pretty good when I could coast and ease into that pace when I was kind of doing the downhill, that, those easier downhill bits, hillier bits, obviously just tough in general because of the conditions, but um, it shoe felt pretty good. It definitely feels like a better shoe than the last two. A shoe I'd feel more confident running a little bit longer in. I definitely want to do another longer run, hopefully squeeze in another longer run at Callum Mount, my marathon pace, which is obviously a lot slow a little bit slower than my kind of 10k 5k pace because it was tough in those conditions and in the shoe but the shoe held up very well um it definitely feels like a much better shoe is it better or more, more versatile in terms of the distances um than some other kind of super shoes not 100 percent there yet or convinced yet about it but i think in terms of the shoe you want to coast in at probably my marathon pace i would feel more confident doing it in this shoe it's just it's super light that midsole feels so much nicer uh, than the previous two and outsole wise feels pretty good as well so from that point of view pretty happy with the cloud maker so so just in terms of other stuff that i was testing i'll start with the headphones so these are the monster dna fit um headphones are kind of ear hook style design um and uh, in terms of the kind of first couple of laps they're absolutely fine stay put sound is not super clear i mean obviously their characteristics are kind of kind of big and bassy like most of monster headphones are it kind of is isn't their dna to be kind of big powerful sound and it was they when i had to chuck some water on me um during the race a few more laps in i definitely found them moving about a little bit i don't maybe need to play around with the ear tips a little bit more there's a lot of ear tips provided with these headphones so i mean definitely i think i'll have a little play around with those the ear hook design generally stayed put but i found i got a little bit sweaty they did start to move around a little bit and i don't know whether that's the ear hook or whether that's the ear buds themselves so they were okay not perfect as i say these conditions very hot sweaty um this is where they should excel and i'm not sure 100 they absolutely nailed it on that front uh but i said only a couple of runs in and i've had one good run where i've you know run a bit more steady monster dna fit headphones they're okay for those first few laps when i had to I start to get a bit sweaty i had to throw some water on myself ear hooks kind of and the tips kind of moved around a little bit so not absolutely perfect um in that uh, run test so other things I was testing, so I had the Garmin Epix Pro with its kind of upgraded heart rate sensor and the uh, Garmin 4 and a 965 pair to my Garmin HRM Pro plus chest strap. And I really wanted to see how well the heart rate sensor on the new Garmin Epix Pro, which is a newer version of the one on the, on the 965, would perform at, you know, intense, kind of intense race. And these feel like the optimal kind of conditions to kind of test it. Actually, you know, having not fully drilled into the data, but the kind of average and max heart rate readings were pretty much spot on based on what the watches say so from that point of view it looks like it performed pretty well i mean i have had some good runs um with it i've also had some mixed runs with the epics pro uh, against their chest strap but today in race conditions looked like it held up pretty well um for me today 
And last thing was the New Balance stretch run belt that I kind of last minute kind of decided to change my usual running belt that I use. I use the decathlon marathon belt. I decided to give this one a go. I had kind of one gel and uh, my phone in there. I like to carry my phone as well, stream my music from. It was fine, it kind of held very close, didn't jump around. Uh, when I had to get my phone and get my gel out, it was a little bit more trickier because it does not a huge amount you can fit in there, but it did work. It fitted my iPhone 14, no problem. I fit the gel in. You could probably get some keys in there as well. It's a running belt that I would use. I think it's about 18 pounds. It's not super cheap, but in terms of using again for a race so i'd have no hesitations using it and um, it's one i was just kind of um picked up this morning and it's kind of worked for me and i'm glad it worked for me because there's nothing worse than kind of grabbing a running belt and your stuff starts jumping and bouncing around and no problems in that fun today other stuff i tested today so i had the ignite 3 titanium on from polar which i've not really been very pressed to the gps at all it's a multi-band gps watch but as with the original ignite 3 it just doesn't really perform like that. The way it's set up, I don't know if this positioning of the antenna or something just means it doesn't do that well in multiband mode. So even today on a pretty open uh, looped course, I had some significant errors where it was cutting corners and swooping around. There's a bit coming back under the Velo Park in the Olympic Park where I think both watches struggled a little bit because you were under the cover of the big building, but the Ignite struggled a little bit more and it also just cut corners, which didn't really need to. Like further on where the Epix was back on track, really taking corners fine again, um, the Ignite 3 was still a bit loose running a bit wide um which is surprising and then it ended up with slightly less distance despite the fact it seemed to run wide a fair bit so yeah still not entirely sold in gps it was pretty much fine today but it wasn't outstanding actually i forgot to put the epics in multi-band mode it was in the auto select modes so it wasn't really at its most accurate best but it still outperformed the uh, polar ignite 3 in a uh, multi-band mode then on the Epix HR, it's kind of what I've seen. So there was, it's really very good for an optical heart rate monitor in a 5K race. For the most part, it tracked very consistently against the chest strap linked to the Ignite 3, producing very similar readings across the board. You just see a little bit of lag there. So, it's, so at the start of the race, it takes longer than the chest strap to get up to my actual heart rate when you know, it jumps up at the start of a race and you go sprinting out the blocks. Uh, so it a little bit of lag there. And there was one little dip in my heart rate in the race where the chest strap went and the watch Again, took a beat or two to catch up to that, but for the most part, it's very close to it. It's really impressive optical heart rate monitor. That's a 51 millimeter watch on my pretty thin wrist, getting a very good reading throughout the course of a 5K with no outrageous jumps for max heart rate or anything like that or dips. So yeah, pretty good, impressive performance from the optical heart rate on the Epix Pro again today in that race. And that, that was all I was testing today. It was nice to get out and race. Haven't done that for a while. Uh, enjoyed the enjoyed the course. Like it's quite a weird one, the way it goes up and down in the Velo Park. I think it's one that I think I might enjoy for longer races where you're controlling your pace, but over five or 10K, like I say, you think, well, I've got to keep pushing up this little hill because I'm not going to get a downhill. And actually, ends up with quite a lot of little pushes up hills throughout the course of 5k and you end up like mini little, little, little mini hill sprints almost and it just starts to tell after a while and I was flagging a fair bit by the end but I did enjoy it I'd like to go race there again and as always from run through very well organized event all round easy quick in and out job uh, and uh, a nice chance to test the shoes okay so there you have it that is our 5k and 10k race test of the on cloud boom echo 3 and obviously we're going to have a full review on the channel that will be up now as well we'll obviously have plenty of versus videos as well to go up on on this shoe once we've done a bit more testing uh, but i hope you enjoyed the video thanks very much to run through for providing us the race entries to test these shoes as well and for the socks that we tried out socks are pretty spot, spot on for me i normally like you know, the crew socks but these are kind of halfway between that and those kind of invisible socks and they were absolutely fine in terms of comfort so cheers for those um, as always like and subscribe hit that little bell to find out about this video and yeah we'll see you for the next run test video